You feel like your world is turned upside down, you are certainly not alone. So how do you make sense of the senseless so you can get through each day in this really new world we are living in? Dr. Laura Saunders is a psychologist at the Institute of Living and the person we turn to regularly for help in these matters. She is live for us right now from the Hartford Hospital Television Studio. And Dr. Saunders, we so appreciate you being with us. Thank you for inviting me, Erin. This really is a world filled with anxiety and fear right now. There is anxiety about when this will end. There is fear about contracting the virus. There is fear about family members getting the virus. And that really is just, uh, that's just a small part of what's going on here. How do people cope right now? So you use the word fear a bunch of times, right? And you know, fear and anxiety go hand in hand. And what we know right now is there is a tremendous amount of anxiety because this is a phenomenon that none of us have ever experienced before. Now, anxiety is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is really good to label it, to know that it's affecting us. Anxiety is more problematic when it hinders our functioning in some way, but this is an unknown. And I think the reason that we need to talk about this and talk about it with our friends and our neighbors and our family members is because it is creating so much anxiety for us. I think what you said really hits home that this is unprecedented and therefore we don't know how this is all going to play out and we don't know when this virus is going to come to an end, when people's minds start wandering and they start uh, thinking these endless thoughts, what is the best practice? Would it be, I know someone once said to me, see a stop sign, you know, and just try to stop your thoughts from just escalating. So honestly, if we are thinking about, well, what is this gonna be like in eight weeks from now? That thought is overwhelming. What we know is that you know, if you project too far into the future, that really just makes us feel more anxious and more out of control. The best way to manage this right now is to take the information that we have, to use fact-based resources, and focus on the moment. What do I need to do today at home or tomorrow to, to help my family, to help myself. I mean, if I'm worrying about what's gonna happen at the end of April or early May, that's gonna be uh, really kind of making me feel worse. So the more we focus on the small things that we do have control over, the easier it will be to help manage it. Being present, I think, is a very, very big one. Uh, a lot of problems for children and how to handle this. We've had a ton of questions into the newsroom. I have two little girls at home, and just this past weekend, they were outside playing, and I said, you can't go near our neighbors. It's, it's a really hard conversation to have, and how do you suggest going about it with such young children who do not understand that last weekend was fine, and now all of a sudden, they can't play with their friends? So, Erin, I always use a developmental approach in these situations. So for younger children, you're going to use simple language and to be as kind of concrete and plain as possible. It is confusing when last week you, you could do one thing and this week you can't do it. So explaining about what germs are and why for right now we all need to just stay in our family units or in our homes, create that distance. Um, to use really simple language. For our older kids, our teens, and our young adults, we can give more detailed explanation. Honestly, I'm not always sure that they're listening better, but we can give more detailed inf information to our teens and our young adults. I think there's also an issue with not being able to see grandparents. Uh, we have been FaceTiming a lot, but my daughter said to me, why can't we go see Nana Pop? I wanna give them a hug. And it's such a hard thing to explain. Even my mom said to me, are they gonna think we're not visiting them for a reason? I just mm -hmm. don't want them to think that. So it's almost twofold, how to explain it to kids and then how do grandparents you know, relay to children that we still love you, we just can't see you right now. So we need to look at this as a moment in time. And as we move forward, and again, what happens this week you know, may be different than what happens next week because this week is even different than last week. So we look at this as a moment in time. You know, For right now, you can't see your grandparents or your favorite neighbor next door. We have to keep some distance from each other to keep each other safe, that you use simple fact-based language. Um, the hope is that when we get to a future point, we'll be able to look back on this and it'll have some more meaning for us. 
but to keep things as simple as possible right now. Dr. Saunders, a lot of people are working from home and there are kids home because there is no school. So how do you manage the expectations in terms of trying to get your work done as a parent and also making sure that you are trying to teach your children in the best way possible? So this has been the, uh, the source of a lot of memes, right? There's lots of memes out there about, you know, I just started homeschooling three days ago. I've suspended two children and I've been fired as the <laughs> teacher for drinking on the job. So, you know, to, to try to use some humor in some of these situations because it is difficult and validating how difficult it is um, to be doing your own work and um, providing some routine and structure. We know children and really all of us thrive on routine and structure. So to have some kind of a plan for the day um, and try to follow it, it's not as good. It's, it will not be as structured as school, um, but to try to have some structure. But I'm really hoping that we have deepened our appreciation for our teachers out there, our, our elementary, middle school and high school teachers, our child care providers, because the work that they do is great. A lot of people have been saying teachers should get paid a billion dollars a year. I think that there definitely is a gained appreciation for what they do day in and day out, and they are so appreciated right now. For parents who are struggling at home, uh, whether it's they're potentially with a spouse that maybe they don't have the best relationship, they are stressed at work, they're trying to deal with their children, how do they embrace this new norm, so to speak? So. I, what I like to say is there are no hallmark families. All families have issues and we are all out of our routine. So sometimes it's okay to take space from one another. I generally call it downtime. So it's okay if child one is in their bedroom and child two is in the basement and you know spouse one is in one part of the house and spouse two is in another part of the house. You know, we're, we're all off of our game. So to give each other space can be really helpful in a time like this. It doesn't have to be like the movies where we're all playing board games and smiling and laughing at each other. That's not realistic right now. Well, I think you are calming all of us down and uh, providing a lot of answers that a lot of people have right now. Before we go to break uh, quickly, how do you help your kids just feel safe with all of these new things going on around them? The thing that I emphasize all the time is to stay with fact-based information. There is a lot of hearsay and conjecture out there. A lot of uh, social media platforms have kind of rumors. So as much as possible to use sites with information, the Harford Healthcare site, the CDC, the World Health Organization, to, to use fact-based information and not to engage in hearsay. I mean, you've had questions on packages, right? Amazon packages. We've been getting Amazon packages for years and no one ever thought twice about bringing a package in and just diving right into it. So to really use fact-based information to try to quell some of our fears that all of these feelings are normal, that is for sure.